What is going on guys? This is Daniel, and in game 2 between the Lakers and the Nuggets, AD shocked the Nuggets with a game winner with 2 seconds left, and we'll talk about that play at the very end. But first, there's a lot more to discuss in regards to this game, so let's get to it. One of the most interesting aspects of this series is the Lakers' defense against Nikola Jokic, and in the first half, let's look at their game plan. So first off, what they decided to do this series was when Jokic posted up one of their bigs, so McGee, Howard, or Davis, they were going to play Jokic with single coverage. So here, McGee is one-on-one, -on -one, and he may get a bit of a stunt from Danny Green, but other than that, he's on his own. The idea here is pretty simple. Jokic is an all-time great passer out of the post, so if you double him, that frees up the rest of the Nuggets. So instead, by playing him single coverage when you can, you limit his passing a bit and force him to shoot tough shots over the Lakers centers. And in the first half, the strategy was effective. Jokic went 1 for 4 on post-up shots against the Lakers centers, we've seen his 3 misses, and his 1 make was a tough mid-range shot. So in the first half, the Lakers bigs playing good individual post defense on Jokic contributed to the Lakers first half lead, and the Lakers also played good post defense on Jokic when a small was switched on to Jokic. So here for example, the Nuggets run an inverse pick and roll where the 7 foot Serbian receives a ball screen from Gary Harris, and when the Lakers switch it, KCP is on Jokic. But when Jokic tries to catch it in the post, look how physical KCP is looking to front Jokic, and it's a turnover. Here Caruso is switched on to Jokic, but notice how he fronts him and the Nuggets have to settle for a 3. And when Jokic did catch it inside versus a smaller defender, the Lakers were really good with their help defense. So here for example, this is in the pick and roll, AD leaps to contest Murray, but when Jokic catches it inside, look how there's two defenders to swarm him. Or here, Jokic gets a switch with Rondo on him, and the Lakers' game plan isn't to double Jokic hard right away, which could unlock Jokic's passing, but as Jokic dribbles and gets closer to the hoop, then the Lakers will come with a late double. Here AD helps, and Rondo nicely strips Jokic. And the late double is a great tool because often the offensive player doesn't see it coming. So here Millsap is posting up, and he thinks he has single coverage, but as soon as he dribbles and turns his back, then Rondo comes for a late double and catches Millsap by surprise. The other notable aspect of the Lakers defensive game plan against Jokic is their dedication to take away his pick and pop 3. So here for instance, he goes for a pick and pop, and what the Lakers will do is late switch. So AD switches on the ball, and Kuzma veers off of Morris and takes Jokic on the pop. And here, Jokic does score against the mismatch. But the Lakers are willing to live with the 2 point make from Jokic. What they haven't let him have is the open 3 point shot, as before this series, he was shooting 44% from 3 in the playoffs. And for the first one and a half games of the series, their strategy was really successful. Only double when you have to, and don't let him take the open three. So here on the pick and pop, if Caruso doesn't late switch on Jokic, that will be a wide open three, but he does late switch, and Murray takes a mid-range shot. But in the third quarter with a double digit lead, I thought the Lakers intensity and focus suffered a bit on defense. So here for instance versus the pick and pop, we have the late switch with KCP taking Jokic and McGee taking Murray, but McGee allows a straight blow by and gives up a layup, and that's one of the negatives of the late switch. Not only are you switching a small on Jokic, but you're switching a big on Murray. Less than 2 minutes later we have a Jokic pick and pop, and Danny Green late switches onto Jokic, and this time we have Jokic taking Green in the post, but the defense isn't very good here, even when Jokic gets inside, there's no late double team, and he gets a pretty easy shot. In terms of Jokic's post ups in the second half, the Lakers defense wasn't as good, but what we also saw, and what I really enjoyed, was the Nuggets put on a clinic on how to move off of a post double team. So here, the Nuggets set a wedge screen for Jokic to get a post up, and AD doesn't get tight to Jokic, and because of that, the Lakers have to switch. That's poor defense. 
but the Nuggets still have to take advantage. With the mismatch, the Lakers will double Jokic, and look how the Nuggets move off ball. Murray fills in front of the post up towards the baseline, and on the weak side, they get a cut from Craig. So you have an elite passer with the ball, the three perimeter players are spread out perfectly, and you have an athletic wing cutting to the hoop. The Lakers never had a chance. And as we run the play again, we see the gravity of Murray. Two defenders chase after him, and this is also the value of sprinting off ball, and that freed up the cut. Here we see it again. The Lakers will switch, probably a bit too easily, putting Caruso on Jokic, and then as AD goes to double the post, Murray will fill to his left, creating a good passing angle for Jokic, and making that rotation for Kuzma much longer. And also, notice on the weak side, we do have that cut from Craig. And in the first half, we also had a great play from the Nuggets, where the Lakers switched, putting a small on Jokic, and then they came sending two to the ball with a double team, and we see the consistency of the concepts. Murray comes right, and Grant will cut, and what these two things do is force the defenders to commit. Caruso takes Murray, Davis takes the cut, and now, with two on the ball, someone will be open. Now, the one other super interesting thing involving Jokic in this game was that because of some of the success Denver had against the late switch early in the third quarter, the Lakers started to stop late switching. And here we see Jokic pops and he gets an open three. Here, Jokic pick and pops against Dwight Howard, and we can see the potential disadvantages of no late switch. Jokic could be open for a three, or here, when Howard runs Jokic off the line, he draws a foul. This adjustment was also featured prominently towards the end of the game. So here in the fourth quarter with a minute 40 left, there's no late switch, and when Davis runs Jokic off the line, Jokic bricks a mid-range shot. Quality D. But the next possession, Denver runs the pick and pop again, and this time, Jokic fires quickly and hits a three. So in game three, it'll be interesting to see what the Lakers do late switch and give up a mismatch, or don't switch and possibly give up a three. Moving on to the last 26 seconds, down one taking it out of bounds, the Nuggets run a play to get a Jokic post up, and as we know, the Lakers aren't going to double that with AD on Jokic, though here, Jokic scores in the post. I think the big question is, should the Lakers actually double in this situation? Well, for the series, Jokic has scored 11 points on 11 post-up shots versus the three LA bigs, which is good, but I think from the Lakers' perspective, you can live with that if it means not doubling. And the bottom line is, this is just a very tough play to guard. The Lakers come down after a timeout, and Danny Green will come up and screen for LeBron as they're trying to pick on Jamal Murray. And in my opinion, the Nuggets switch a bit too easily, so now LeBron has the mismatch, and he drives and creates an open three. The Lakers do get the offensive rebound though, and they'll take it out on the baseline. Now, before we go any further, I do want to note the Nuggets played really good defense in this game, and the big reason why is because they protected the paint. In Game 1, the Lakers had 54 points in the paint, but in Game 2, they only had 34 points in the paint, and the Nuggets did a much better job of shrinking the floor and crowding the paint, forcing a mediocre 3-point team to fire from 3. So on this last play, yes Caruso was a bit too open, but the strategy of not letting LeBron and AD dominate inside really paid off for them in the second half. But this last play was unfortunately inexcusable. First from the Lakers perspective, after the game AD said the play was for LeBron, and based on the fact that LeBron wasn't looking to set a screen, it looked like the play was for LeBron to catch the ball and shoot. But AD is active and moves off ball, Rondo throws a great bounce pass, and it's an open shot. What the Nuggets did made sense, put your biggest player on the ball, and they subbed Millsap out and Plumlee in because with 2 seconds left you'll often see a lob play. But sometimes substitutions do backfire, as Plumlee isn't as comfortable defending on the perimeter, he gives AD too much space, tries to call out a switch when he shouldn't have, and AD wins the game.